Can you get me to the Historical Society from I here? I can't. That'll be easy. Okay. Famous then, last words you say. <laughs> <laughs> so how the heck are you this morning? Well, <laughs> I am fine. I am fine. I was hoping it wouldn't rain this morning while we visited, but, you know, it's Oregon. <laughs> I know. I feel like this is just our liquid sunshine. Yeah. No worries at all. So I noticed that all your neighbors in Selwood, is it okay if I say you live in Selwood? Oh, absolutely. Is that a security risk? You don't travel no. with an entourage? You're no. just here with me? Just, I'm, I never travel with an entourage. The way it works is the day you walk out of the Capitol and the new governor's sworn in, um, you no longer have security. Victor Atia, Vic Atia, great, wonderful person and governor, used to say you come into the Capitol as a peacock and you leave as a feather duster. <laughs> <laughs> you will never be just a feather duster. No now way. The, you're going to turn left at this light. Okay. So tell me what it is about Southeast Portland and Selwood in particular that is so much home for you. Well, I grew up in a small town of less than 2,000 people and this neighborhood feels like a small town. Everybody knows everybody and the friendliness of it. And uh, uh, my autistic son lives in this neighborhood. He lives just a block and a half from me. I, I feel so good that he goes to the grocery store or goes to the barber shop or goes to a restaurant and people know who he is. I mean, that's a real nice security for me. When Mike was six, um, we took him to OHSU for an examination. We knew something was not right, but nobody could tell us what, what it was that was not right. People at OHSU told us that he um, was severely emotionally disturbed. That was the terms I used, severely emotionally disturbed. And their recommendation was that he be permanently institutionalized. Oh, wow. And your heart must have uh, sunk. It was awful. Oh. It ended up that the only place that he could get help at that time was Perry Center for Children, which then specialized in kids with emotional disorders and autism. There was a book on autism that came out during the time that Mike was at Perry Center, and it described the cause of autism as refrigerator mothers. What is a refrigerator mother? Cold, unfeeling, <gasps> uncaring. Oh my gosh. That was the cause. I would go to, you know, to visit with Mike's counselor at Perry Center, and it was not unusual for him to tell me, Barbara, you must understand, this is not like heart disease. There is not going to be a cure. And you must also understand that you are a big part of the reason for his disability. So can you imagine a young woman with all these experts telling her this kid should be in an institution, this kid will never go to school, never have a job, never live on his own, never marry. Um, I mean, and you're the reason. You're the reason that your child is like this. So coming full circle now as a grown man living on his own, retiring from a job, I mean, your heart must be singing. Oh, I am so happy for him. I think people will be surprised to know that you have a new partner. I say new because it's not that new, but have you talked about that publicly? We've been together, it'll be eight years in August, and we've been abiding in the same household for about two and a half years. And that first lunch, we closed down the restaurant. So I, I think we both sort of understood that there was a spark. I feel that spark watching you together just this morning um, as he walked you down to the door and as you chatted, you must have kissed four or five times. <laughs> Which is awesome. <laughs> All of our friends say, oh, you're the cutest couple. Well, <laughs> it's hard to be cute in your 80s, but, <laughs> but we certainly didn't find that our age was any deterrent to how we felt, uh, how we behaved, how we, how we formed a new bond. What advice would you have for women? 
I want women to stand up for what they believe in, what they want, what they want to do, and to design their own lives and not let somebody else decide what they'd like to be when they grow up. And when, whether growing up means 20 or 40 or 60. What's the wildest thing that you will admit to? I love video poker. I love the <laughs> poker machines. I love to go to the casinos. Everybody knows me in there. Uh, I'm comfortable. Uh, I don't think I'm going to see it in the newspaper the next day. <laughs> okay, so um, a little birdie told me something about you. Mm. 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 You're curious? Yes. Yes. <laughs> a little birdie told me that you love to curse like a sailor. Well, that's probably an exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> I learned once I was in public office that some of the language I used that was more colorful probably was totally inappropriate. I have to tell you, the legislature is a place that behind the scenes, there's a lot of cursing. The same with TV stations. Yeah, yeah. Same. But when you're out of that setting, you kind of get to be who you are. Okay, favorite curse word? My mother's favorite curse word. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. And my mother did not swear very often. Mm. She was not a person who swore. She came from Montana. You'd think she'd have known how to do that. I think she <laughs> did know how. There's a famous story in my family about when I was two and a half years old. My dad and I were out in the garage and he was working on a car. I was sitting on a stool watching him because I like to do that. And he hit his finger or thumb, I guess it was with a wrench mm. and he said son of a but he didn't say it out loud because I was sitting there and he was going oh 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 like that and I said say son of daddy say son of <laughs> and that broke him from ever saying it in front of me again when I was a little kid <laughs> I've been out of office what, 25 years? And people still respond to me like old friends every place I go. And they t say, oh, my mother just loves you. And uh, you, were, you spoke at my eighth grade graduation. And I mean, things that I don't think people would even remember anymore. No, you're part of the fabric of this state. Yeah, it's so, that's and, why. And that's such a surprise to me. I mean, it, you're, you know, I like people so much, it's a reward to have people like me.